we now know, we think, that President Trump isn't going to be on the debate stage Wednesday night. Although, honestly, if he shows up, what are they going to do? Tell him no? That would, that would be a great move, actually, if he showed up. Come on, Donald, I'm going to be there. You should be there, too. Uh, that said, we do know where he's going to be Thursday morning. He'll be reporting to a courthouse in Fulton County, Georgia, and he'll be processed. He'll be booked. There probably will be a mug shot. They'll probably sell it on mugs and T-shirts on the Trump 2024 campaign website. And it all stems from his efforts to get what he believed was a fair and honest accounting of the ballots in Georgia in 2020. The prosecutor, the district attorney in Fulton County, believes that he broke the law in that regard. Well, let's bring on the president of the Public Interest Legal Foundation, a man who knows a thing or two about election law in this country, Jay Christian Adams. Christian, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me, Larry. Well, listen, you work for the Justice Department, which is often the purview for issues like this. And of course, we know Jack Smith, special counsel through the Justice Department, has already uh, charged President Trump with certain crimes uh, leading up to January 6th. When you look at the Fulton County indictments that the president is about to get processed on, what sticks out to you? Well, look, the Justice Department could have brought charges against these people in Georgia and didn't. That speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's pretty clear to me that what they're doing in Fulton County is sort of amateur hour. It's not the same as a thorough DOJ investigation. It's sort of it's like revenge time mm -hmm. where let's rope in all of the people who had breakfast with Donald Trump or knew him or got an email or visited and let's make them pay a price. I, I was struck by how tenuous and limp a lot of these charges are against a lot of the people named. Yeah, and uh, you know it's interesting because in some respects, you want prosecutors to be accountable to the voters. However, in Fulton County, Georgia, this may be the problem, that she's appealing to the voters. I mean, this sort of action in that district actually reaps great political benefits, and that way a district attorney can use the law as a political weapon like this. And this has changed, Larry, in the last 25 or 30 years, where when I went to law school, even places like Fulton County, even places like New York, Attorney General, were places where those offices, the people who held them, attempted to be credible, attempted to follow the law, attempted to be measured. They weren't just indicting people for fun. But what has happened in the last five to 10 years, and Hans von Spakovsky and I at Heritage have written extensively about radical changes that have happened in law schools in the yeah. last just five or 10 years. Uh, what has happened is the law has become a political weapon to many of these people, like Fulton County prosecutors, uh, certain people, the DOJ, a whole new generation of lawyers is coming up that are more radical, far left, borderline Marxist, if not full on Marxist, uh, graduating from elite law schools. Yeah. I'm not saying this DA is from an elite law school, but she's one of this crowd. Uh, you also, as a lawyer, uh, must be somewhat concerned about the, the criminal charges brought against the legal advisors to President Trump. You know, you have people like John Eastman, who, uh, even if you disagree with his take on the Constitution and, and his uh, examination of what could or could not be done with regard to electoral college voters, he's, he's a learned man. He's a constitutional law professor. He gave his advice, and now they've criminalized that advice, unless there's some more actions that I'm not aware of that he's being well, just charged take, with. Take it back 50 years, Larry. Imagine the lawyers who brought Roe versus Wade. Remember, uh, there was no constitutional right to uh, an abortion before that. And they're all sitting around. And, and imagine if back then some prosecutor said, you know, if you bring these crazy radical uh, arguments in front of the court, we might indict you or any of the civil rights jurisprudence. You know, Brown v. Board, that was a revolutionary theory. Yeah. There's revolutionary legal theories that get pushed by lawyers all the time. And yet it's become criminalized when it comes to some of the lawyers who work for President Trump. Yeah, uh, that said, it appears uh, many people are speculating, as I uh, alluded to the fact that he won't be appearing in the debate Wednesday night, that part of that might be a legal consideration. If any of the moderators ask a question about uh, the various charges that he's facing, or if uh, some of the other candidates make charges about it, uh, Chris Christie comes to mind, 
then anything he says to defend himself on a political stage can then be used against him in the court of law. That's a horrible position that they put this candidate in. That's why the founders put the Fifth Amendment into the Constitution, because they knew how the king's court abused uh, testimony by people over you know centuries. So it's exactly right. He, he has a right under the Fifth Amendment. I'm not sure he necessarily uses it all the time, but he has a right under the Fifth Amendment to keep his mouth shut and not talk to anybody about these charges. But yeah. you're right. If he goes on that stage, he might not have that choice. Well, and that's the problem because, sure, he has that legal right, but politically, you know, he's standing on the debate stage and, and you know, Chris Christie charges him something about these indictments. He says, ah, yeah, no, I'm going to take the Fifth on that. And that's that. That doesn't help you out politically. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, Christian, if I could turn to the uh, criminal behavior, it appears the criminal behavior of the Biden administration, or excuse me, the, uh, the Biden family, and most specifically, maybe I was right when I said Biden administration, uh, the extraordinary actions of the U.S. Attorney of Delaware, uh, what we're learning more and more about David Weiss in his plan to negotiate this plea deal for Hunter Biden. And I want to remind everybody, David Weiss, the center of this growing scandal over the plea deal, is now been named the special counsel to investigate this whole mess. But Christian, it seems like he's part of the problem in this whole thing. Now that we've learned that uh, he misrepresented either to Congress or to the investigators, whether he even had the power to bring charges or not. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I mean, when I was at the Justice Department, I mean, there was a time, Larry, where I had a case where we might have needed the testimony of a reporter for USA Today. And I know that's not the same exact, exact issue. But we had a deep respect and reverence for restraint, right? And doing the right thing when I was there. Uh, and this just seems to be thrown out the window now. It, it, you know, who cares if it's the right thing? And once again, this is sort of like we talked about the radicals coming out of law schools. These guys think that their law degree entitles them to be power brokers, yeah. to use the law as a weapon of power. And it, it's unfortunate, and that's what it seems like is happening with the special counsel problem. It's the old anecdote that people, you always laugh about the fact that a, uh, a prosecutor, prosecutor can get a federal grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. But wait, that's not a good thing, Christian Adams. The ham sandwich didn't do anything wrong. The fact that you can get that grand jury to indict the ham sandwich is actually, that's a sign of corruption. Yeah, the process is the pain. I mean, after that ham sandwich gets indicted, it has to hire a lawyer. Uh, its life gets turned upside down. Yeah. You have to pay a lawyer a lot of money. And trust me, uh, lawyers charge a lot of money, like a lot of money in this kind of thing. And so if you indict somebody for some ticky tack thing, like happened maybe to Mark Meadows in Georgia, yeah. then uh, then Mark Meadows' life gets turned upside down because he faces the prospect of jail. And so he has to burn through personal savings, maybe sell property for some ridiculous ticky-tack charge. And that's exactly why the charges were brought. Yeah. And uh, there's just something not very kosher about indicting a ham sandwich. Get ah, it. that's a good one. Thank you. All right, uh, back to uh, these investigators on the Hunter Biden case. It appears that uh, uh, Jason Smith, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, and Jim Jordan, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, they're subpoenaing any IRS agent or any FBI agent that was privy to these meetings that took place so that they will be compelled to testify whether David Weiss said that he couldn't bring charges or that he wasn't allowed to bring charges or he had to ask permission to bring charges. What do you think they're going for here? Why do they need more corroboration on that issue? Well, corroboration is always good. Uh, to have more people back up what one whistleblower said is a good thing. I was in a similar situation, and I had another whistleblower jump out in public and say, yeah, th that whistleblower is correct. Yeah. But here's the big warning sign, Larry. Who gets to enforce these subpoenas? This is the same garbage we put up with under Eric Colder, where the Justice Department will probably announce if they haven't already, that they will not enforce these subpoenas and they won't bring charges of contempt against any noncompliance. Oh. What Congress needs to learn from the Holder era is they need to do it themselves. Yeah. They need to be the ones who send the sergeant of arms to, to do what's necessary to get the testimony. It, it just looks like more obstruction of justice right before our eyes as this thing unfolds. And I know as a veteran of the Justice Department, it brings you no joy to say that. Uh, J. Christian Adams. President of the Public Interest Legal Foundation. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you.
There's Take more care, to Larry. come on O'Connor tonight. This here is the St. Louis News Channel.